Alright guys, what is up? Uh, today we had a request to go over spark plug changes, um, which is actually a pretty um, important thing on this engine because it only takes one type of plug, which is I believe the copper core. Um, you don't really want to run iridium or any of the double platinums or anything. Um, you really want to keep it the standard stock, um, and you also want to use the NGK uh, plugs as well. Um, I also have the NGK wires. Um, those seem to work the best. Um, everybody typically uses them because they seem to work so well. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and go over today, I'm not going to pull all of my plugs, but I will show you basically how to do it because I don't need to do mine. Um, but this is your distributor, and you've got three plugs on this side, and you've got four on this side, but this one here is a coil wire, so that's not actually a spark plug wire. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is follow these wires. It's easier when they're blue, you can see them really well. Uh, we've got one that goes right up here in the front, one right there, one right there, and then one that goes right under there if you can see it. Now these are cylinders 1, 3, and 5. It says it on the top of the distributor here, 1, 3, 5, and somebody painted those on mine. Now the other side is going to be the trickier side to get to. We have down below this, you can see that wire right there. That's cylinder 2. Right in between the throttle body and the idler control is 3, and then right there, or sorry, 4, and then back there is 6. Um, so these, this side is harder to get to because you have um, the idle control and the throttle body in the way. Um, but what I found, if you can reach your hand back behind here, you can actually get to um, six really easily. Um, and then you move this wiring harness out of the way, you can get to four. Um, and then if you unscrew this uh, attachment right here, you can get to two. Um, so that's the easiest way to do it. Um, what I am going to do today is I'm going to be checking the resistance on these wires just to make sure that they are in good condition and they aren't broken. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you basically what to do um, to get the spark plugs out as well. Alright, so I'm going to just go ahead and start with cylinder number one. I'm going to unplug its coil air. And it is connected to this little block right here. And then when you have the harness or when you have the plug boot itself there's actually something you can get so I got these let's see if you can see them I got these um, spark plug boot uh, I don't know wrench or whatever at Pep Boys um, you know they work okay I really I, if I had known how well they would have worked I wouldn't get them because they close down to that much which is pretty much the size of the boots on here um, but if you have them um, it helps kind of get down into these little places kind of just grab the boot sometimes and just pull it up. So this is spark plug boot number one. Um, it goes right down in the front there. And I'm going to go ahead and do a resistance check on this. Now the same process, it's going to be the same process for all of these. The boots are really easy to get to. Um, this one you probably don't need, let me show you. Alright, so on this side of the engine, this is the passenger side for the US, um, you have this little bracket if you have the injector cooling fan. I don't think you have the bracket if you don't, um, but there's a ground here that you want to be careful of, um, and there's an injector clip here. Um, so these, there's two bolts right here and right here where the ground is um, that hold this in, or, nope, sorry, the one next to the ground that holds that bracket in. Um, if you need to remove that in order to get the spark plug out, but just in order to get the boot, you don't need to. Um, you just pull it straight up. Um, you don't want to pull on the wire, remember, you want to pull straight on the boot itself. Um, so there you go. And then for this one, you might need to remove the PCV hose itself. Uh, you don't need to remove the valve. Um, but then you might need to also remove this little clip just to kind of get some better view. Um, that normally has a little metal tab, I just don't have mine on right now. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, test this wire real quick to make sure it's doing good. Alright guys, so as I was gearing up to test the continuity of this wire, I actually noticed, let me see if you can find this right here. Right here in the spark plug, you can see that shiny spot. Right there, there's actually a pretty decent gash in this spark plug wire. Um, so that is definitely not something you want to see, and this is definitely going to need to be replaced. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and replace this boot, oops, sorry, because um, that is actually really bad. Um, I don't know how long that's been there, but that definitely could be the reason that we're having that misfire. It could be leaking the spark out, um, and it could not be working very well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull all the other boots, just because I know we're going to need a new set already. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the other ones and check them as well. Um, this is not what you want to see when you have a new boot. Um, luckily, this is only like $30. Not too terrible, but um, we don't want to 
waste these boots. We want to be careful with these. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pull all the boots just because um, of that. But I'll go ahead and show you guys the uh, spark plug removal first. Alright guys, if you take one thing away from this video for the spark plug uh, removal and installation, um, if you can't tell just by looking at it, the spark plugs are down in very, very deep like galleries and crevices. Um, and the reason, the, not the reason, but the problem with that is dust and things just fall in there. Um, so you definitely want to be very careful. Don't remove your spark plug unless you take a compressor like this and blow it out first. Um, you can take a compressor and blow it out. You can um, get a vacuum if you have a small enough nozzle, but you don't want to let all that, because there's usually little dirt and rocks, and you don't want to let that fall into your cylinder head, uh, because if it does that, it'll score it up on the inside, and it'll just be a bad um, thing for your engine to do. Um, so we want to go ahead, what I do is I blow out this one, remove this one, replace it, and then I put everything back in and then blow that one out because if you blow them all at the same time you're kind of blowing it back and forth between them and you can't get them all at the same time so definitely I would recommend one at a time with this process um, and be very thorough it's better to be safe than sorry guys Alright guys, now that we've blown it out, we're going to go ahead and use a 5 8 uh, socket. Um, there is a tool supposedly in the back tray if you have yours. Mine did not come with it. It should be a long rod though. Um, but I'm just using a couple extensions and I always put tape on mine because it gets some of them come off and it really gets annoying. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and stick it down in here. To go ahead and undo it. Alright guys, so now that we have the spark plug out, it's actually a good way to see how our engine is actually running. So right here on the left we have almost a new plug. Um, you can see it's just a little bit charred. I used it for a little bit and then replaced them because I just wanted to go ahead and make sure the gap was right. Um, and then here's the plug we just pulled out. If you can see right there, it is very white on the end. Um, so that usually means that it is um, running lean, which I already knew. Um, I thought I thought that the engine was running lean, and that was confirmed with the recent emissions test. It is running lean. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is pull all of the plugs, um, and if they all are running lean, then we know it's a system problem. If this one is only running lean, then it could be that single spark plug boot um, that was messing us up. We weren't getting complete ignition on that. Um, so we're going to go ahead, um, double check it with all the others. This is a great way to learn how your engine is running as well. Um, if it's oily, it might be leaking oil from somewhere. Um, check out your valves and everything. Um, but this is this is a really good way to see just how your engine is running. And as always, guys, when you replace them, you want to replace them with the NGK version. All right, um, these are the best plugs by far. Um, everybody agrees NGK is the way to go if you're running stock. Um, if you're running extra boost and stuff, you might want to do it a little bit different. Another thing to know, guys, these NGK, you do not put um, the anti-seize on them. They already have an anti-seize compound on their threads, um, and you can over-torque them if you put anti-seize on. So you just want to leave them stock, um, stock plugs. Alright, now when we're putting the spark plugs back in, you want to do it with your hand first, um, just to make sure you don't cross-thread it, because you can't uh, cross-thread it if you're just doing it with your hands. Um, you're not strong enough to really break aluminum that easily. Um, if, you're if you're getting any resistance, it's always better to undo it and then start over um, than possibly cross-thread your head, in which case you either need a new head or um, you'd actually have to uh, get it machined. Um, so now that we got it in here, it's torqued to 14 to 22 foot-pounds, um, which is somewhere around uh, 210 inch-pounds. Uh, just multiply by 22. Um, so that's what this goes up to. So this one I did it to 210 ish, because that's about where it gets to. And then you pull it out, and you're all ready to reinstall your spark plug boot. Um, I don't have my boot yet because I just found this one was bad. Um, but there you go, guys. Um, just be careful when you're putting the new boot in not to destroy it like the one that I have. Um, in the interest of saving time, so you guys don't watch me do every single boot and plug, um, I'm going to say uh, just. The other side is pretty easy actually, um, other than just removing that hose. Um, for this side it's going to be the hardest. Um, basically, you're going to have to remove this little uh, 
uh, hold right here. Um, you might have to remove this hold, and you might also have to remove the throttle uh, cables as well. Those ones, it, it was kind of iffy if you have to or not. Um, the cruise control is definitely the hardest one because you need to get right in here, um, and it, you can definitely just undo it. You just pull it back and then unloosen the little throttle. Um, but again, guys, reach back behind here in order to get the plug on the boot. See if you can see it. Um, you can see my hand right here. Um, it grabs it pretty well. Um, you want to make sure that these are all the way on. Um, if you're doing your injectors, it's really easy to get to these, and you can just do it really easy. Um, but other than that, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here, guys. If you have any more questions on how to do these spark plugs, definitely drop a comment down below. I usually answer in like an hour or so. But there you go, guys. I hope that this helped. These, it is a little bit difficult on this, but as long as you remember to blow out all of the caverns before you take your plugs out, um, you should be able to do it just fine. All right, guys, there you go. See you later.